Welcome back to Fastest Learner Wins. I'm here with David Kidder. FD, good to see you again. Likewise. You're the author of New to Big. What's the big idea behind the book? It's the idea that uh, venture capital and entrepreneurship are forms of management. All larger organizations uh, have mastered, to some extent, operations and efficiency, and they're very comfortable with it. They can make the big bigger. But going after new things, that zero to hundred million dollars of new oxygen, is extremely hard because they're little things. And in reality, they're not little. It's the new oxygen. And getting good at managing that is as important as managing what you have today. What is your definition of growth mindset? And what leaders that have embraced a growth mindset, how, how does it show up? Growth mindset is really captures the difference between the skill of operating and creating. Operating is about planning. It's about the knowable. Right. Um, uh, growth is about discovery. It's the unknowable. And so your ability to have growth mindset means you can do both of those jobs well, which means we can learn and unlearn. We can balance the velocity of learning inside of an organization that meets the rate of change that's happening from the outside in. A growth mindset has the skill of doing both of those jobs all at once. Operate, create, um, discover, and plan as a skill with a new set of lenses. And are leaders, are they ambidextrous like that? Can they operate and discover, or do we do we as leaders tend to have a bias of one over the other? Well, if, you've been tra if you're a classic good to great leader, the dominant part of your life is spent on making the big bigger, right? Mm -hmm. And so your, most of your skills are, exist inside of that context. But it doesn't mean that they can't reemerge or be refounded in yourself, right? When I wrote The Purpose of Bionic now seven years ago, it was to ignite growth revolutions. And I originally thought it was about like money and startups and to some extent capability. But honestly, it's about the interior life of the leader. Now, we are the limit, the ceiling by which, right, we limit or are limitless in possibility, and we control that permission. So as we founders, we have to allow the learning to happen so our biases don't control what's possible. So David, on this series, we talk a lot about the fastest learner wins, mm -hmm. but we also need to be fast at unlearning things or unbelieving things. What, what are some examples of those types of things that we need to unlearn? Um, mostly it's around what we think we're very good at, right? We, our history, our past performance, we think is a great predictor of future outcome. And that's true if nothing changes. But if things are changing, there are outside forces that we deny, all of a sudden that giftedness no longer matters. And so part of this work that we're doing inside of P&G is really refounding, but it's also to rediscover what is our proprietary gift. Because if it's true, when you bring it to the world, it's rewarded. In fact, in a case, it's, it's actually the competitive advantage that people see it uh, from and with you. And so, but if it's not true, no one's afraid of it. And so I think this work uh, that we're doing inside of P&G today changes uh, the soul of the company way. And it gets them back to that giftedness that's actually commercially true. And if it's true, you can bet your life on it, you can bet your company on it. And you've been quoted that, uh, as, as saying that we need to treat our lives like a VC would. What did, what did you mean by that? Uh, venture capitalists are very good at uh, looking at talent and looking at risk without all the answers. And so they're very good at discovery. They are looking for the intangibles, intangibles like giftedness, uh, obsession, need, size of a problem in the world. A marketplace might be small by math, but massive by need with a gifted person or a company to go solve it. You have to be able to thread that needle where hope and reality get unlocked, that potential kinetic energy that gets formed around someone or a company that is determined to solve the need and win a marketplace that's now really being born. And you've mentioned uh, proprietary gifts a few times, and, mm -hmm. and now I'm curious, what are your proprietary gifts? Um, this is that zinger question that you were gonna surprise me with. Um, I think I deeply care about the interior life and conversation around growth. Um, renewal, right? At least companies will be renewed. Um, I actually call it becoming at Bionic, which is the idea that there, there are no outcomes. There is no, you get to the top, you realize there's nothing there, right? Uh, it's really about the journey of growth. And um, I'm really obsessed with that for large organizations, which really are about people and getting underneath it all to figure out how can I lift the ceiling of what's possible? Because ultimately, we as the leaders, you as the leaders inside the company, you are the limit. Right? You are the ceiling of the permission of what's possible inside of PNG today. And you just have to challenge yourself. And growth lives in that discomfort. You want to get there. In this case, there is no there. It's all about becoming. David, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for all that you're doing for PNG and our brands. Oh, I love the company.
That's it for Fastest Learner Wins. We'll see you again next time. <laughs>